Hi everyone, this is Sue. I have a little project that I want to share with you today. In my old book studio Etsy store, I'm doing, I could guess you could call it a de-stash. I have a lot of old books and I'll probably never be able to make them all into journals. So what I'm doing is putting them in my Etsy store and they come as um, a kit with a cover that you can design the way you would like. Um, I'm going to move these out of the way. Like this one has a, it's a kind of a green book. It has an image with a matting, some trim, a layered flower. A domino has a matching image. It's a dangle. And a little butterfly card with some rhinestone and lace. Another piece of lace. And then it's got this piece of muslin, dyed muslin tied around it for a closure and then this is the book. It's called Letters to Karen and uh, there, this one is listed in the Etsy store already and the link is listed below. So I just wanted to show you that this is how the kit comes. It's all different pieces that are uh, designed together to you can create your own journal cover. And then this is another one has a pretty lace and a butterfly card. So today what I thought I would do is I'm going to take one of these projects as you would get it if you order it and have a bit of a tutorial to show you how you can turn it into your journal. Uh, turn the cover into a design and then make it into a journal. Some people think, well, yeah, I don't really know how to, you know, make a journal out of an old book, so what am I supposed to do with it? Well, there are a lot of, a lot of YouTube videos showing that, but I'm just going to show you how the book comes, and if I were to make it into a journal, what I would do. So first it comes to you, and you just kind of remove all the different parts of the pieces of the kit. We'll set them aside. Now this book is called Silver Slippers. It's blue. Not sure what the year was. It says 1928. You know, and it does have a spot here where I go, oh, what am I supposed to do with that? And Well, what I decided to do was I'm going to take out the book pages first. So you look at your book, and you can kind of see right in here, you cut right down along here to remove the book, book guts, I guess I'm going to call it. So I usually use an X-Acto knife. And also, if you can do it another way too, is you would leave your front pages, maybe about four or five of them, and then start, if you want to use these pages as your journal, more like an altered book, then you remove like five or six pages and go through the book like that. and where the pages are cut out, then you would glue those pages together and you'd have like a page pocket. Then you go through your book and you turn another page, take five pages out, glue it to the next page. So there's some videos on YouTube that show that too. So you can take the guts completely out or you can, you know, remove some pages and glue pages together and then cover your pages. So I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and what you want to make sure is you don't cut so far in that you cut, don't cut your spine. So just kind of start cutting little by little. And you can see it, it starts to kind of come away. I'm cutting kind of close along to the book and not on this side so that I don't cut my 
my cover. You know, it's, it takes a little bit of time. It's not, sometimes you can just do a real clean, nice cut and zoom, zoom it out, but you kind of want to take your time to make sure you get it out clean. This one I'm cutting really close into the book block because this side is really glued really close to the cover. So I'm kind of cutting more into the book block so that I can release, release it without cutting into my, my cover. Now I'm removing just the last bit of paper. So there, I have my book block cut out. And this too you can use for different types of projects inside your journal for pockets or tuck spots or just um, lots of ideas you can do with your book block pages. So now here we have our cover and what we're going to do is remove all of this loose paper. Anything that isn't really secure, I'm going to tear that away. So when we adhere when we build up our spine, it'll be, everything will be glued down tight. So, that looks pretty good. When we have the block of pages taken out, this is my cover and I'm going to use for the journal. It does have a little bit of a tear here that originally was in there and I'm not going to even worry about that. I'm probably going to build up the inside of the spine and it'll be It'll be just fine. So as you look at your journal cover, the spine is just kind of the canvasy fabric and then the covers have kind of a cardboard in them. Well I like my spine to be a little stiffer so I take a piece of cardboard. It's not real thick and it's not real thin either but you can feel when it's pretty firm. Sometimes if my book covers are thicker, I'll glue two together. But this time I'm just going to use a single one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue that. I cut it to fit in there. It's kind of even with these. It's just inside so it can still, you know, your cover. You don't want it too wide. Then your cover won't move very easily. So you glue, glue that in. Also, if you like to have... Now this is cheesecloth. If you like to have a little bit of that, like your old book webbing is kind of sticking out, then you can right now, before you glue it down, you know, just cut a little piece so then the little pieces will stick out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut a couple pieces and glue them down and glue in my cardboard for firming up my spine. Just adding a little bit of glue on the ends of the spine for my little cheesecloth to stick out. Uh, I kind of spread my glue kind of thin so it just doesn't take quite as long to dry than if it's put on there real thick. And then I just lay a little cheesecloth in there like that. If you want it to just, just needs to peek out a little bit. It doesn't need to be overdone. So now my cheesecloth pieces are in there. And then I'll, I'm, you can... Make your signatures for your journal and sew them into your spine piece and then glue it down as well so then you kind of have a hidden spine. I'm going to glue my spine down and then I'm going to punch holes through for my... I, I like to have my string show so it, everyone is different. So I'm going to glue that down now and get that secure. So now I have the glue kind of spread evenly on my spine and I'm going to lay that in place. Now if you, if anybody buys one of the book kits, you can most certainly uh, watch this video and follow along. Make it as I make it. You can pause it and get to that stage and then, you know, work right along and by the time you're done with the video, you'll have your cover ready to go. So I glue that in. So now it's a little bit more even across the spine. The spine has a little bit of body to it. You can see the little bit of, you know, a little bit of cheesecloth sticking out. Not a lot, just a little suggestion of the binding webbing. 
Uh, sometimes what I like to do while this dries, or once I get everything, I usually put a piece of fabric over my spine. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that this time because I really like to have this show. So sometimes I'll put the fabric on here, which does hold up pretty well. Or I'll add a piece in here of a muslin and then cover it with paper. Uh, there's a lot of just different things you can do. But a lot of times while I let it dry, then I'll weight it down with some things because I, I like everything to dry kind of flat. Okay, I decided on a couple of choices that I'm going to use for my inside cover of my journal. If I were going to use fabric, I would probably tear the edges and maybe cut it just a little, tear it just a little larger size than my journal so all the little fraying kind of sticks out over all the edges. What I decided to use was this faux leather. I'm going to kind of go with the warm colors in my image from the cover and the flower. And so when you know, I open my journal, those colors will kind of continue on. So I didn't want it sticking out anywhere. And I, cu I cut it with um, my, this cuts my guillotine cutter. If I tear it, I always end up with this black fabric that doesn't tear quite like the, because I like the little frayed edge it gives there. But once I have to cut the fabric off, I usually end up cutting a straight line anyway. So I decided to cut it to the inside shape. One thing that I like to do, and you don't have to do this if you don't, but the cardboard for the spine that I added, I like that to be blue. So I'll just take a marker and I'm just going to kind of color that in there because that just might stick out a little bit. just kind of has the same color as the cover. And then I'm going to take my brown and I'm just going to go around the edge of my paper all the way around um, just in case the inside lining doesn't quite reach to the edge of the book. So I'll do that now. Okay now as you can see I just kind of colored a little bit of my edge all the way around. I mean, you can ink it, um, do whatever you want, or you can even leave it too if you don't mind the cream color sticking out of the brown. Uh, I'm just trying to create this as simply as I can for someone that maybe doesn't have all the inks and different things like that. So now when I lay my liner on there, you know, you see the, you don't see the gray, you see the blue. And, you know, if it doesn't quite reach, you'll see the brown. The paper is brown. When I measured this, I measured it exactly the length, the width, the length of the page. But on this side, I went just a little bit longer. Because I'm going to, when I glue it, I'm going to stick the um, fabric down into these grooves here. So when my page moves, it's, it's secured in there. So now I'm going to glue my inside liner onto my pages. Okay, now I have my glue on. I'm doing half at a time, and I made sure I put it into this gutter here next to my spine. Uh, sometimes I'll just fold my fabric in half, a little bit like that, so I can see my edge. I think it went this way. And then I just line up my corners with my paper. Like that. And then just kind of start laying it down. I kind of watch. It's kind of going to go on straight for me. can clean off some of the glue on the blue to get any on there. Okay, and kind of push it down into that crevice. And then I'm going to glue on the rest. Okay, I have the rest of the glue on the second half and 
kind of working it into my one of the gutters, I'll call them. Okay, and you can smooth it out. Work your liner into your corner. I don't know if it's a corner or what, but it's just fine. You, know, you just don't when you bend it, you just don't want that gapping up. So make sure it's down in there. Just keep working it so you know the glue has stuck. And right here where I've got my little tear, that should hold that together. So I want to make sure that that's together. Okay, so now that's the inside of our, of our book. Like I said, now I would probably just put something on that while it's drying and press it to dry so that it... It doesn't curve up or anything like that. So then what I'd usually do is I know that these are my book pages, so I know they're going to fit in here. So I'll use these pages as a template for my signatures. So I kind of pre-made my signatures. I made four of them. I used... Um, some dyed paper, some music paper, some dictionary paper, and this is a piece of designer paper. So each signature has a piece of designer paper. I cut it a little longer and folded it over to make a pocket. So then, um, you know, I have all pages and, and some pockets. If I don't, if I don't want to do any more, then that's complete. So these are, this signature paper had just all kind of vintage Im photos on. So the paper that I did not use for this signature cover, I cut some of those images out and I'll use those for tags or something in my, in my journal. So then this is the fourth signature. So when I lay them in there and I close up my book, this is this is what it'll look like. That's how they fit in there. So what I will do now is I'll let this dry. I'll sew in my signatures and then we'll continue on getting our journal to completion. Also before I press my book to dry, I'm going to glue on my image. Some of the images have a cardstock mat um, you can, um, you know, you can tear it with like an old book page if you want to tear some of the old book page out, and that can be peeking out. Um, you can also uh, back it with <clears throat> fabric if you want, you know, just tear a piece of fabric out that'll match your image or some lace. I'm going to keep this book simple. I like the blue is so pretty, and the image is pretty, and I want this silver slippers to show so I'm going to glue my image on right here like this and then this little piece of trim that came in my kit I'm going to glue that on right up there like that so I'll glue those on and then I'm going to let that let that dry okay I have used Aileen's tacky glue I have just a layer of glue I don't use hot glue in my journals ever anywhere um, mostly use Aileen's tacky glue and I'm going to just glue that on right underneath that title of the book. And you can use like a credit card or something too if you want to. I, I like to spread my glue around on the back of my images so that I know nothing is going to ooze out. It's all on there evenly. And then, like I said, I'm just going to glue this little piece on there, and then I'm going to let it dry. 
And there you can see I have my glue on the top of my image. I'm just going to take this little piece of lace. And just lay it right on. Kind of work it in. I like to work it in so it's kind of the same shape as my image. Some people like stuff hanging out. You know, it all, anything works. Just, you know, whatever you like to do. So there, now I'm going to let it dry. I'll be back. I want to show you the signatures. I worked on the signatures just a little bit. I had taken a 12 by 12 piece of designer paper for my signature covers. And I just folded them to the width that I needed them. And I cut them just about an inch and a half longer. And then I folded that around to make a pocket on this side. And then there's just, like I said, just the different papers in there. And if I had pieces like this left over, or pieces like this left over, <coughs> excuse me, that's what I use to make my pockets, just different pockets. And um, just I just wanted to make sure it was just really simple. Um, this paper here has some different shapes in it. So I cut out some of those shapes just to make little tuck spots and some are banners. Also, I used my book pages, like this was the page that had the title of the book on, and I just made, made some pockets out of them so you can tuck things in the pocket. Stick them in the tuck spots, clip them on your pages, glue them in your pages. If you glue them on your page, you can glue around three sides and you tuck here and here. Um, so then I took um, this 12 by 12, like I had showed you, had the images on. So I, the extra paper, I cut the images out. And I made these paper clips. You know, where you put the paper clip inside, the two pieces are glued together. So this is some of the designer paper and some of the images from this paper and a little lace on the bottom and then I just made them into a clip for and each each signature has one of those little clips in it. So these are my signatures now. There's another clip and another uh, one of the see if I can find it. This one, this page says the wedding gown. I thought that was kind of neat. <laughs> Maybe I'll pocket out of that. Here it is. So this page had a little bit of handwriting on the top, so I just folded it over, glued it on the edges, and made it into a pocket to tuck in the book. Now, I may sew around the edges. I, I kind of like that look. But like I said, I was just trying to create these journals quite simply for someone that's a beginner that maybe can't, you know, do all that stuff or doesn't sew or whatever. I want to show you that you can make a really, really nice journal just very simply for, um, you know, not a whole lot. So I'll get these sewn into my book and you can add, you know, you can, you can download some digi kits and you can use a digi kit for your pages you can use all the old book pages for your pages uh, you can just use white paper you don't have to use coffee dyed paper you can use you can add bags you can add um, different sizes of papers um, there's just many things you can do but uh, I just kind of want to show the basics on this video for anyone that wants to give it a try for their first time so I have my cover completely dry. I weighed it down and flattened it out overnight. And I um, measured where I wanted my signatures to be sewn in. I only had four signatures, so I spaced them evenly and from the center evenly out. I'll probably post a tutorial for how I learned how to do the sewing in your signature pamphlet stitch instead of me trying to teach you. <laughs> That'll take The video will be way too long. 
And once I get my holes punched in, I just use my little, stole this from my husband, so it's a hole punch. And I usually put a couple of layers of um, poster board underneath, and then I just, you know, punch my holes. And then I'll take my signatures, um, get them all, you know, together and the right side up and bobby pin them together so they don't move. And I'll do the same thing, mark my holes, punch my holes, and then I'm ready to have all four of them done. And I'll punch the holes in and I'll sew them in. And then I'll be back to show you the journal. I decided to use this Baker's twine to sew in my signatures. And when I cut my length, I always measure my book three times to make sure that I don't, you know, I don't want it to be too short. So, so I have my needle with my breaker's twine, my holes punched in my signature, signature going the right way, holes in my spine, book going the right way. This is my first signature, goes in my first set of holes. So I'm going to point, push my needle through that hole. I always leave just a certain amount out so that I can tie. Sometimes I'll stick it under my bobby pin or sometimes I clamp them. And then I go in the back, make sure I'm in the same row, go in my second hole, find my hole in my signature, It's a little tricky. It's not always, you know, it doesn't always go the way you want it to, but once you do it a while, you get a little better at it. So I come up that second hole, down into the third hole, into the book. Kind of pull it a little tight, not too tight, because I don't want my string to come through from going to the next hole, into the hole in the signature. Pull it tight into the hole, into the book. So now I went down every hole and back up every hole. Now I'm going to go back to this hole. Up my hole. And I'm going to go back down this hole. And then back through up this hole. Okay, I take a needle out, take out my clamps or my bobby pins out of my signature, kind of pull on my strings a little bit, and I try to hold them as tight as I can. I go back to my book and you know, make sure they're not loose. If they are, then you have to kind of tighten them up a little bit. But I think that's pretty good. Some people you know, if you want to do more as you're sewing, you can add buttons or beads or anything to your strings. I'm just going to do it basically the simplest way. As you get to knowing how to do it and you get a little more comfortable with what you're doing, you can get more creative. Sometimes I put a little glue on that and then I just tie it in a bow. And then... Uh, my signatures are a nice length. I'll just leave them alone. If they're too long, I'll cut them off. So now I'll continue to do that. I always kind of make sure, you know, it looks like it's in straight and where I want it to be. And now I'll sew in the rest of my signatures. So here is our book. I have uh, the signatures are all sewn into the book. All my pages, my little pockets that are in, my little... Uh, Photo paper, paper clips or embellished paper clips with photos. And uh, now, what I would do if I, you know, this has a lot of room to yeah. add rows. Lace to your edges, uh, stamping, inking the edges, places for more photos if you want more tuck spots. Like I said, this is just a real basic way for you to take one of my books with the journal kit covers and turn it into a usable journal. 
So now to finish off, I have this piece of lace. If I want, I can take, I would probably glue that on here. So just a little bit of the flowers show in the front. And uh, my flower, I would probably glue that on right here. Now this, I would maybe hot glue on. You know, just a small, not the whole thing, just a small amount right there. That holds about the best. And uh, I could also, for my dangle, if I wanted a dangle, just punch a hole in the top, about a half inch down in my book and put a charm holder on and add my charm dangle there. Uh, pin it, it is pinned to my dyed muslin that I just had tied around the journal. And I can just slip on and off. You could also punch a hole in the front and the back Put an eyelet in, cut your muslin in half, and tie it through so you can tie a bow to keep your journal shut. I've decided on how I'm going to do my closure. I decided to take it and weave it through the bottom section of my binding strings. And what I'm going to do is probably just kind of glue that in there. Then I sort of took my piece of lace and cut the flowers out a little it had straight edge on it so I cut the flowers out a little bit then I'm going to glue that on over my spine stitching so like that and then I'm going to take this flower just has a paper fastener through it and I'm going to paper fasten it onto here so when we open up our journal it it's the cover will just have nothing on it. So I'm going to do that now, and I'll be back to show you what it looks like. Uh, so the, the lace is glued on. It I used ample glue like around the edges because I really want it to be stuck down fairly tightly so it doesn't catch on things, and then I'll let it... There's really no sense to glue where you see a lot of the netting of the lace. So then I took my flower... And just open the paper fastener and put it through uh, the tie. For the domino dangle, dangle, I'm going to string it through one of my ties. I'm going to just have it slide it up to kind of the middle there. And then um, I just simply like to tie my journal shut kind of simply. So that's how I'll kind of do that. Or the dangle then can you can attach it to the anywhere that you want later on to if you want to move your dangle to another spot. Now I'm going to show you if you want to take it just a little farther I am went through some of my stash and I picked out a few pieces of ephemera and fabric that I had. Uh, this is from my paper doll journal and you know we have a lot of things that sometimes we print off and print a couple of them and uh, we use one, and this was from um, one of the little journal covers I did when I did my bears. And this is Thinking of You, and some more pieces of fabric, and this was practicing my little stamp with my little friend stamp. And then I have a couple of pieces of just some broken jewelry pieces. So what I think I'm going to do is just go through the journal and uh, now like say this is a quilted little quilted house I made a bunch of quilted little houses and I thought well that would be kind of cute uh, could make a little corner pocket inside of the journal cover with this like a little old embellished library card could go in there and there is a pocket here I could have an old photo. This could 
go into this little pocket here. Like that. And there's another pocket here. So I, you know, I just I would go through my journal and just kind of fill up. Maybe I had another something I like to tuck up under here. You know, here's another. Uh, I might do some fabric tabs on the sides of the pages. You know, and as I add the, the fabric tab on the page, I can always kind of add one of these little, little dangles. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll go through and just add some of the little bit of the ephemera in my journal and then I'll be back and we'll, and we'll go through the finished journal together. I have everything together that I'm going to put into this journal now and I'm going to do a little flip through of it for you and you can see what your journal can end up looking like after you buy a cover cover kit from my old book studio Etsy store and follow along with my tutorial and you can make your own journal. And this basically I have done for beginners. There's a lot of really um, detailed journals out there where you can add super amounts of embellishments and uh, they're all beautiful and I just want to kind of help people that want to get started to just see how simply something can come together that is functional and yet pretty. So I, I like to just have my journals open simply. They're a slip-off. Sometimes if you have to tie too much every time you want to open your journal, you just, just either don't tie it shut or really don't want to open it when you just got it tied shut. So I just do a simple one tie with the muslin. And I just had my dangle just on there. So I can put it on my spine if I want or pin it on somewhere else. Um, so then this just is free to move. I added a bulb pin with an old piece of jewelry. So, you know, get your old pieces of jewelry out, your old earrings. It has a couple of blue stones in. So here I added a pocket of some old ephemera I had and um, one of my embellished library cards added a little lace up here and I added a tab to the top of this photo in this pocket did some stamping There's another one of my journal cards some stamping on the back so I went through and just stamped a little bit on each page too I used maybe three or four stamps my embellished paper clip, fabric tab, another little journal card in this pocket. Some more stamping. This had a butterfly on. I, cu I cut the butterfly off. It was a little too bulky. I just love that stamp on there. So I'm tucking that in there. Added some lace to the edge. Each section has a piece of lace. So there's, you know, four edgings of lace. And here shows your sewn in signatures. This is a little piece of notebook paper. This is a little tuck spot up here if you have a little photo and you want to write about it and tuck the photo in. Some more stamping. Little fabric tab. I cut this into the dress shape for a pocket, added this journal card, another off-cut paper that was left over, added a little fabric and an image on there, and some lace stamped inside. This was just the bottom of the paper, so I kind of like that. Tucks in there. This is one of my journal cards from my Etsy kit. It's another vintage ad journal card. 
an embellished paper clip and a book page pocket. Just a piece of ephemera. It says, thinking of you, added a little lace on the edge there and some stamping again. Stuck this little journal card in that pocket. Some more lace on that page. So it just has a real vintage feel, stayed with kind of the vintage look. Um, added just a very little bit of ephemera. This is just a little list. Some washi tape and sewed some fabric. Another, this just wraps around the page. I kind of glued it just right here and can be a tuck spot for this journal card. This has another piece of jewelry pinned onto this fabric tab with a little bit of uh, lace tied on. But that was kind of pretty. It's like a little leaf, like a shell leaf. It's a little vintage image in here with some lace. An empty pocket. An embellished paper clip. Some stamping. A vintage image there. This is just a piece of paper. Just Stationary with a fabric tab, some stamping, lace on the edge. There's little pockets of pieces I had left over, There's a little ticket in there. And this too can be a tuck spot up here. Um, you know, it was just a piece left over. Her head is just about cut off. But, you know, I like to use it. Use up things that look kind of cool. This was a from my paper dolls journal that was left over, so I just wrapped her around the page. So she's a little tuck spot. Little tuck spot here. Another pocket. Another piece of paper with a circle image label on it. Some blue flowers and this bird ticket. Another embellished paper clip. Just a journal card with some stamping on it. Another fabric tab. A little rose. Some more crocheted lace on the edge of that page. One of my dress tags with the journal card tucked in there. And then just a piece of paper with some lace and stamping. Just slides into this pocket here. And this is another little tuck spot. The birds to a tuck spot. Another piece of paper with a stamp. Stamping. And then I <clears throat> glued the little house, quilted house in the back with this vintage journal card tucked inside there. And that's the back. So that is my little tutorial for you on how you can turn one of my kits in my old book studio Etsy store that have the cover kits and you can turn them into into a journal. I'm going to run kind of a little bit of a special add-on to a journal cover kit that someone purchases and it would be for today only. So after today then the kit add-on little gratuity package won't be available. So uh, for those of you that watch to the end of the video, have this option if you're interested in buying a kit to get this little add-on. It'll be um, probably a combination of different things to embellish your journal. So there'll be, it, it'll be a combination, maybe a package of maybe uh, 12 to 15 items. Uh, be maybe like uh, feathers or there could be some paper clips in there different colored paper clips it'll all kind of coordinate with your package or your whatever kit you bought uh, there might be some little little dangle tags in there like this kind of on a hard card stock uh, some little pieces of fabric or lace some images that will match your journal cards some lace for trimming your pages, uh, maybe some quilted fabric squares. 
I have some tickets and tags. A lot of my ephemera, um, if I've got it, you know, in my stock will be aged already. If I print up some new stuff, all of my ink is color fast, so you can coffee stain or tea dye your images if they if they come white on the back and your ink will be just fine. So here's some more just some images. Probably breathe some of my dress tags uh, in your little embellishing kit and some more tags. Um, maybe some children's book page with the illustrations on. There'll be probably some of these little envelopes. And you know, you glue them to your pages or tuck things in. Uh, this a vellum, vellum envelope. Little, the little envelopes for sure. Some doilies, a color to match your journal. There's this little, you know, this can be cut apart and you can use the little flowers. It's like a stencil. Some stickers you can write on there with a white pen. Some catalog pages from a Sears catalog. And it'll come in a little bigger bag like one of these. And you can put that in your journal too. You fold it in half and slice one of the ends open and tuck things in. Probably a piece of uh, some type of jewelry to glue on, lay on, use as a dangle or a closure of some sort. Some piece of old jewelry and uh, some type of little bit of embellished flower. So what you'll need to do when you order your kit, if you would like to have the add-on <clears throat> gratuity package of ephemera, um, just write a little note to me when you have ordered and say, I'd like, I'd like the little add-on embellishment kit, and then I will send it with your kit. So if you don't write that on there, then um, I won't send you one. So um, people who watch to the end of the video can uh, take this option of an embellishment kit. So it won't be all of this, but it'll be a, a combination of these types of things. And I, like I say, probably 12, 15, 20 extra pieces in there. So um, I look forward to seeing if you visit my shop and uh, if you have always thought of trying to make a journal and just didn't quite know for sure how to get started, I hope my little tutorial today kind of helped you um, get some inspiration to make one or follow along, um, pause the video and play it again until you um, get yours completed too. So I thank you for watching. I'll probably list this journal uh, in my Innkeeper's Etsy store and um, you can check out the, the uh, details of it over there. So bye now. Yeah, I'll be right there. I'm videotaping.